Mm, good evening, and welcome to my officiatorium. How is everybody doing today? Great. Uh, let's see here. All I'll be, I just op uploaded a video showing you a weird infestation in my tank. Wanted your thoughts. The video is an extreme close-up of something I thought was planaria, but might not be. Is it the one that you emailed me and I responded to saying it is planaria? Or where, or was that someone else? All of this comes to a, uh, we don't know where your video is, uh, a hobby, or a lobby, a lobby. Uh, uh, where is your video? Where's it hosted? Echoes? You guys are getting echoes. Is it any better? Um, oh, okay. So it was somebody else who had the planaria problem. I had uh, I had about three people contact me about asking, is this planaria? Is this planaria? And uh, I found that interesting that that was, uh, oh, you tagged me in the video. All right, let me see here. Am I, is there a video I'm tagged in? Uh, let me hop on. My did, where did you tag me? Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or let me know and then I'll try to find it on the appropriate site. You know, it comes to, wait, here we go. Uh, and then also, what's your name? Oh, it's on YouTube, okay. So it's on YouTube, you tagged me. So let me see. Is it under your name? I'll uh, B 43. Let me see here. Well, I think I found you. And so far I find no, maybe is it under shorts? So far I only see these, is, where, is this your channel? Ah. Is this your, ch oh wow, okay. Is this your channel with the, video games and stuff on it. The video is called Species Identification at Fish Tree. Hmm. Oh, no. Let's see here. Oh, I found it. All right, let me take a look here. So that is not a planaria, um, just so others can see. Planaria have triangular heads. When they have a round head like that, there's a good chance that it's a nematode. Um, that spiral down it is very, very interesting looking and is very unique. Now you can see it's got green in the center of it. In the video, you can see that. And that indicates that it's eating something with chlorophyll or algae. And... Uh, Yeah, I can see where you're saying it has legs. Are they legs or flagella? Let's see here. It does kind of look like legs. That's very interesting. Uh, yeah, it has little tiny legs underneath it. Um, so it almost looks like a centipede. Way too skinny for that. I'm guessing way too small also mixed with like a sperm <laughs> with a helix in the center of its body 
Now, how big is this thing for reference? Um, uh, Mick, you you wrote a book on epistos. I would love to read your book on epistos. Uh, you know, if I were uh, an evil billionaire or or a benevolent billionaire, I mean, either way, I would um, really, really like my wife and I have talked like the, even if we weren't rich, we were like, oh, man, it'd be so cool to have a map room. Um, but yeah, it's a handheld microscope on your phone. Oh, interesting. So I think it's a nematode of some sort. I think it is a nematode with flagella that are like little legs. Um, and I haven't seen it before. I'm just guessing off of it's soft bodied and kind of worm like, but I, I, I don't know for sure. Um, I'm as stumped as you are. I'll, I'll pass it on to uh, a biologist friend, but um, I don't know that one off the top of my head. It's probably some sort of little detrivore. It's clearly eating stuff with chlorophyll in it. So I'm guessing it's not predating unless you have green shrimp in that tank uh i i would guess that that's the the case uh thanks chris i realize that i'm also kind of stomping on bentley's stream but you know screw bentley no i'm just kidding <laughs> but uh bentley i uh i uh, i think he'll understand i just wasn't feeling very good today to be frank guys um i got I've been having this like battle with my insurance company over covering slash even getting in my, uh, my medications for some of my problems. Um, and one of them is that since my head injury, I don't produce any testosterone or progesterone or, um, HGH or any of those things that your luteinizing hormones from your pituitary gland tell your your uh this thing what's it called honey help words pituitary gland thyroid thyroid tell your thyroid to make but you do make some in your gut you've got a biome that makes everything from serotonin and dopamine thanks craig i'm glad you like my holodeck my my uh <laughs> uh, uh, yes, thyroid. Yeah, you got it. But in any case, so I got my blood drawn. Yeah, of course, they, they bruised up my arm. They always bruise up my freaking arms whenever they draw blood. Um, they can never get it. Every time it's four or five attempts um, and I tell them to just use my hand and they don't listen and then they do my hand and it never bruises. It's totally fine. It drives me insane. Like without fail, they always do that. Um, but what I was going to say is that I am supposed to, a uh, big part of the problem when I go completely, hey, wife, get out of the library. Uh is that um, when I start getting like incoherent and like falling asleep, it's it's partially due to the fact that uh, they, they just uh, tested me and my um, testosterone level was 14 parts per million. Now, your average male has anywhere between 200 and 900 on average parts per million testosterone and i'm being a little vulnerable here because like honey the light's busted uh i'm being a little vulnerable in that uh i guess i'm less of a man without the testosterone i can't like crush walnuts with my thigh gap um and my elbows and things. Needless to say, I can barely get out of bed. But I've been trying to get my t 
testosterone injection or gel or anything covered and they just first they were out of stock then they weren't covered then they needed a prior authorization then the prior authorization they got they stopped making the the the, the milligrams that came in like it's literally been months now trying to get this taken care of and uh i just was gonna tell you guys warn you guys that that's what's going on in my life right now and uh it's stressful it's it's one of many things obviously going in, on in my life and but that's where i am uh that's where i'm at and mentally i'm a little bit drained i'm happy to see my fish tanks and right now literally both of my uh <laughs> Mike Master Supreme, if anyone thinks they could willingly uh, get me out of that library that has an aquarium ceiling, they have another thing coming. Yeah, no, I would never, ever leave if I had like a giant Amazonian fill. I, you know, I don't like salt water, honestly. I know that this AI that I played with for an hour to try to make me a library that I liked and I modified like. I took pictures of libraries that I thought were cool and then like had it alter them and stuff. Um, you know, I, yeah, I just, you know, it just doesn't, it won't do the fresh water. I don't know why it drives me nuts. Um, Mick. Wow. You got a lot of, you got a Pisto Banshee or, or tag or tag guy or tag or tag guy or tag guy. Or Ortega, I don't know how to say that honestly with the AI. Uh, I'd usually say Ortega I, but that doesn't sound right. Uh, Colin Derry and Aram Piggy. <laughs> Aram, I don't, that last one's hard too. Aram No Pig. Man, I haven't even heard of two of those. But, you know, I know you're my Episto guy if I ever, um, yeah, uh, you're my Episto guy. You're my dwarf cichlid dude if I ever need it. Ch Larry D, what's going on? Uh, Luke has apparently heard of the orangutan eye, the ortegae, ortegae eye, ortegae eye whatever i don't care um what's going on guys what are you doing get out of here bigfoot uh i guess she's just gonna interrupt all night uh sinon jewel says uh alex i know that feeling i have an autoimmune weirdness and chronic illness too it's the worst when your doctor says you need medication and insurance fights it solidarity my friend yeah yeah, I have United Healthcare too, which is like the worst. They're just awful. They're I used Mid Journey actually, but I used Dolly at first and it kept crashing today. I don't know what was going on with it, but it kept eating my quarters or dollars literally the way I had it set up. But yeah. Um so that was frust frustrating a uh, pet peeve of mine people who say frustrated or frustrated that's not how you say it it's frustrated okay now all you latin speakers can yell at me uh for not being able to say the name of the episto uh sketty what's up how are you uh, where was the other one? Oh, here we go. I have a lot of cats, says the phlebotomists there are really sweet about sticking wherever I ask. And my blood pressure is around 60 or 80 over 60. Makes it hard to stick, but they never needed to try more than three times. Nice. That is lucky. That is lucky. I have, um, I have veins that roll, apparently. That's that's what I've been told. And I was like, 
Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I definitely agree. Uh, Sinan, uh, <laughs> irregardless that, that word pains my soul too. Yeah. And there aren't many that do like, I really don't care. I'm pretty chill about most things. Uh, Oh, you're, you have a phlebotomist at Swedish that's good, huh? I always like the old one. Like, if you can find the old lady in the, like, it, that, that's, like, mean looking, that's the best one to draw your blood. So, guys. Hey, Kevin. What's going on, buddy? Discordia. Hello. Mel. Hello. So, Mel, hello. Mello. Mello. Mel, hello. There's something going on there with words in my brain tonight. They're, they're bouncing around. And Jeff Kane, of course, always good to see you, Mr. Philanthropist himself. Um, you see what I did with all the extra gift uh, memberships you got me? Uh, I built an addition to the house. It's a freaking sweet library. Uh, Scoop. Hello. Um, so, guys, I was curious. I'm running into a problem. And I knew it would happen. Uh, I, so usually I spend, and you guys, some people might be like, what? Uh, but I usually spend four to six hours a day answering people's comments going back over questions, answering emails, dealing with uh, people who have questions on, on social media. I try to ignore Instagram because it, it's, it's always insane because it's always Zoomers on there. And I'm like, their questions are always, not always Zoomers, but a lot of times it's Zoomers that are like under 25-ish. And, you know, they're like 18 and, and I'm like, you ask me a question that you can just Google and it will give you the exact answer I'm going to give you. Um, but so I kind of have avoided it, but I know that a lot more people are getting on there. So like I, I'm trying to stop uh, ignoring it. Also, I've got um, TikTok now, too, but that isn't like buzzing or anything. It's it's I'm just putting certain shorts that are any of my shorts that are edited and are like highly ADD. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put them on there and I'll put them on, uh, what do you call them? Uh, TikTok and uh, Instagram and YouTube shorts. Um, so I have a script written as well, guys. And I know that members just voted on, uh, what videos they'd like to see that I have in the works in and either those are saved like partially edited or I have the voiceover but I haven't put any images to it or I have the video but I haven't built the script like they're they're all in some uh state of disrepair like that that I kind of tend to to like bounce off projects while I work on videos because I usually try to put out two or three a week and that is uh, not including live streams, obviously. So that there, and sometimes one of the live streams is like a themed thing. So it's been kind of a, uh, it's a crazy mess, especially in my phone, in my notes. And in, and now that I've got good photo and video editing software, plus like now I've started actually, and maybe I shouldn't reveal this, but I've literally started baking thumbnails before I even write the script or film the video um, when I come up with something. And if I can't think of a thumbnail that I feel like would be clicky, I don't do it. And I hate to say that that's the state of things, but on YouTube, it really is like, I, cause I don't want it to be clickbait. It needs to be true. It needs to bring you in and, and have something in like that makes you think about like something or that promises a deep dive. And well, I, I hope I'm never short on, on what I promise with those, but uh, I probably over deliver and people are like, shut up. Um, but uh, Discordia, to be honest, I don't know how y'all run any of your channels. I need help with insomnia is my problem. Well, yeah, I've got terrible insomnia 
and the opposite of that, where I'll just fall asleep. It's because of the insomnia and because of my my hormone levels. Like I'll just fall right asleep if we're sitting and like it's calm for a minute. It's it's becoming it's been a problem for a while, but uh, I'm hoping that once they straighten out my uh, testosterone. Uh, I'll finally be able to, I don't know, stay awake for more than an hour at a time. Uh, because what I do is I fall asleep for like 30 minutes and then I'm back. <laughs> Aquatic Moose, thanks. You like the new studio? Me too. It was really expensive remodel. Uh, African Orchid Dude. I like your name. Uh, and uh, I like that you guys are, we have so many members in here. I, I think that's because of the gifted memberships partially, but I mean, regardless, irregardless of that, uh, no, I am so uh, honored that the, so many of y'all want to be members or wanted free memberships, <laughs> whatever it might be. Yes, Carla, that it's kind of like narcolepsy. It is a form of narcolepsy. It's called systemic narcolepsy. Apparently, if you read about it, it, it it's linked to traumatic brain injury also, but it, uh, I, I'm hoping that's not the kind I have because that doesn't have the best prognosis, but, ooh, nice moose. You got Lamia, uh, Perugia named after the beautiful city in Italy, even though they're nowhere, nowhere from nowhere near there. Very cool. Um, so guys, I have a conundrum and I need your input because only you can save me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, or you're my only hope. You're my only hope, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only one, only hope, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hey, I even kind of glitched out. Um, but here it goes. Uh, the amount of people that have contacted me on a daily basis lately with like a fairly long, like, uh, Hey, my tank, I, I'm trying to set it up and I don't know what fish to put in it. And there's this and this and that. And I'm thinking of this for the substrate, but I don't know. Could you give me the pros and cons of this? Could you do this? Could you, t you know, that stuff that I used to have all the time to deal with, well, not all the time, but you know, I used to have the time to deal with more. And now I honestly simply don't. And I hate being a jerk. And when I can, I try to get to the questions. But honestly, I have to sleep. Uh, sleep. I'm reading things while I'm saying things. I have to, I have to sleep. That's one of the things I have to do, but I have to spend time with my wife and have a life. And, um, Lately, with between research and editing videos and working on uh, other presentations and the nonprofit stuff that we have going and uh, um, just basically tracking down things for for the next video or for a swap or whatever it may be. Um, <laughs> oh. Alabib, I like I like your thought. Just put people's questions into chat GPT. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. And then if it's wrong, I'll like edit that. But the thing that I'm frustrated with is so often people will say, can I have, uh, I, I need to know the answer to this, this or this. And I'll be like, I have a video on that called like, they're like, I don't know, should I use this? Should I, do I need a sand cap? That'll be their question. And they'll have a long thing about how their tank crashed when they move stuff around and they don't know whether it was this, that, or the other. And it's stuff that like I could pick apart. Maybe we'd get somewhere, but honestly, my answer is going to be as good as their info. And, um, I sometimes hesitate with that, but uh this is a good place to ask questions the comments are fine and emails are fine but i feel like i um uh, lately i've been getting people who are so used to me responding with like a long detailed response that i'll get a question mark like 
or a well dot 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 or it's been three days i haven't heard from back from you i don't know what to do and so guys i need to ask you should i start doing like, like a consulting thing and that's the only way i can think of doing it is to still a lot like four hours a day or whatever to interaction socially like with you guys and the way i always do and then just saying that the other time i i gotta set a rate and it's like i will get on the phone with you i will walk you through whatever it is you're wondering about and that'll be something i offer and i know that like uh uh cory at aquarium co-op wanted like i think it was like 400 dollars an hour or something because he's running a business and to him it's like not worth his time otherwise so we're not talking about that um but what would be a fair rate you guys like i want to know what you guys think a fair rate for that is i'm not saying that i'm not going to answer questions anymore by any means you know that a year ago i said hey i can't answer every comment in my to my videos and here we are over a year later and i still try to answer most of them within a week if not right away uh, like within a day you know um you think 200 bucks an hour well you know honestly um i wouldn't go over 100 bucks an hour ever just out of accessibility but if you needed a 15 like i could you would, I feel like people would use their time much more efficiently and think about their questions a lot better if they were paying for it. Um, yeah, exactly, Mick. Um, answering questions can and will end up taking up all my time otherwise. And I got to find a middle path because I, I, I have to focus on like the research that I'm doing to make a good video for you guys. And when I get all these things coming in that are on all things all over the place, I have to um, think about that. Um, well, hold up. You're drinking Dr. Pepper. What about Super Chats? Um, what about Super Chats? Uh, I love Super Chats. I don't require anybody to – you don't have to pay me to um, – yeah, I mean, you don't have to pay me to answer your questions. I'll try to answer your questions if you're in a live stream. I'll try to answer your questions if you're not even subscribed and if you're just in the comments. That's my problem is that so far I will do that for anybody. Um, and Jeff Kane says, all right, Jeff, I do really respect your um, opinion here. Uh set a rate i charge 250 an hour after our service calls one hour minimum for the hour heating company you, you work for well you're making some good money sir uh that's very nice um i think yeah i think 50 to 100 an hour as long as it's scheduled or or like within my work day which is about a 15 hour work day but that's fine because it's on my time like my work day i'm not working all day i'm going to the store i'm watching a youtube video whatever um but uh let's see here sage you say 23 for 40 minutes slack between appointment and only by appointment like a counselor same skills um huh that's interesting yeah um yeah, you know, that's another good point, uh, Nirvana Aquatics. Uh, I, you know, I, and I try to tell people like, hey, guess what? Um, you're asking all these questions about capping a substrate. I actually have a 25 minute video on it and then they'll respond TLDR. And I'm like, oh God, get out of here. Uh, but I'm not mean to people. And today I'm in a mood where I'm feeling mean to people. Um, so oink master supreme you are a mod on another channel and you would never think to bother a channel owner about a fish related question outside of the chat format it's impolite and presumptuous yeah well you know 
I understand that, but I also understand emergencies. I also understand people who are just really worry warts, anxious people. I'm an anxious people. And so I get it. Yeah, that's another good way to do it. Um, 15 minute increments. That is a really good way to do it. Thunder Aquatics. You know what? That is 20 bucks for 15 minutes on the phone or Skype. And if they go over, they, you know, then it's another 20. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I like that. Um, I feel like I've put over a decade full time now into thinking about fish, reading about fish, learning about fish. Um, and I think I'm still going to try to answer as many questions as I can in a day. But after a certain point, I have to just kind of start a queue. And uh, I think I'll start like making that. Um, you guys think that's fair. Yeah. OK. It seems like most of y'all think that's fair. Only accept Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be that difficult. Uh, absolutely agree. 15 minutes is plenty of time. Yeah. You know, I, I think, yeah, like 20 or 25 bucks. Well, the thing is, yeah, because if it gets taxed, I lose 30% of it right there to the government. So I think 25 bucks is what it'll be for 15 minutes. And I know that sounds like, a, I mean, that's a hundred bucks an hour, but, uh, I'll, uh, uh, Al Abib says, you are literally a walking library who doesn't appreciate it's it's their loss, in my opinion. TLDR my ass. <laughs> well, yeah, um, that's the thing is I try to make my videos very detailed um, so that people don't ask dumb questions. I don't mean that in a mean way. I, and I, I mean that in a tongue-in-cheek way. I ask so many dumb questions in my life. Uh, you got to at some point, especially when you're new. But when you're at a certain level of fish keeping, you could ask any number of a lot of people. And those entry level questions are better tackled by somebody who may be in the community and be able to tell you, this is how the nitrogen cycle works, you know, whereas I feel like if you want to ask me a question, maybe we could pick apart like what's going wrong with your anoxic or anaerobic filtration or what's going on with trying to get some fish to breed or balancing this or that um so yeah oh yeah yeah i don't know what i'm thinking clark you're right uh i'm thinking there's a hundred minutes in an hour is what i'm thinking in my head which is not the case uh Ooh, I like that, Moose. I could get equity in people's fish tanks and have them send me their fish they produce. Uh, YouTube's not letting you send a super chat. I'm sorry. Uh, they did that to me last night, too. Hey, uh, Ed Girl. Uh, how do, do I say that? Ed Girls? E. Do Girls? E. Do Girls? Ed Girls? Anyways, uh, the R. I don't know that unit, our dollar. Um, but thank you so much for the super sticker, buddy. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, where is R? I'm trying to think in my head. Romanian? Are you in Romania? Uh, anyhow, I've wasted. Oh, Eddie is fine. All right, H Eddie. Oh, thank you, Eddie. Um, I've wasted enough time talking about this, but. I think that's going to be the case is if you don't hear from me and you have a question. Oh, Brazil. Awesome. That's weird. What's the unit of money in Brazil called? Does it start with an R? Is it roulette, uh, real? I can't remember. Anyways. Uh, 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 okay, nice. Picking up a hundred gallon. I think I'm going to do an Oscar tank or a flower horn. I personally think that the Oscar will be far cheaper and they'll both be personable because they're cichlids, but they are freaking adorable. The, um, 
uh, the baby Oscars and uh, yeah. A Google form for basic questions would be a good idea. <laughs> you you mean just like um, my response would be the Google search window? And I just send them that. Uh, Instagram has an auto reply feature. Maybe set up something saying, I'll try to get to your question and provide. That's a good idea. Um, that is a really good idea, Thunder Aquatics. What I should probably do is set up a like business account or whatever it's called, you know, so that I think you get more of those options too, maybe on Facebook as well. Um, but you know, such is life. Um, I'll have to I'll have to sort all that out. Uh, Clark, uh, not trying to be disrespectful. I understand you just said you're having problems with your health. What did you say that's disrespectful? I'm confused. I don't think you said anything disrespectful. Cellar Door, hello and welcome. I always like your name. Reminds me of uh, whatever movie where they say that's the most beautiful word in the English language. Um, African fish dudes reply. Oh, you know what? It's probably because I'm not on, I'm on, uh, oh wait, have the person who schedules Skype call with you fill out a Google form beforehand that asks some basic questions about their tank. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, like at the doctor when they ask you the basics. I know. And you know, I was telling people for a while, Donnie Darko, that's the movie. Yeah. I haven't seen that movie in about 15 years. Um, no, I think I watched it with my wife when I first met her. So it's been about 10 years. But um, yes, people could pay with Dr. Pepper. That is totally fine with me. Yes, Dr. Pepper is 100% fine. Just got some uh, L144 Plecos, but I'm pretty sure they're just albinos. Are red eyes an indicator? Yeah. If they don't have blue eyes, they're not L144s. They should have beautiful blue eyes, and they should have a yellow to their 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 tone. Otherwise, they're just albinos. Um, now, there is another type of albino, or albinism, which is the lack of pigment, lack of melanism, melanin, and, and there's a form that I can't remember the exact name of. And it's the the even more infuriating point is that uh, the, the pigments that make up all the different colors. So like you'll in, in like a snake, you might call it like leucistic where the they ha still have yellow and they have like kind of an off gray and maybe a, an orange tone. Uh, and then, yeah, and then in humans, you could call it vitiligo, where they're missing, where, where the melanin is starting to disappear. Um, and leucistic, sometimes you'll see um, blue eyes and other stuff. But then there's like platinum, there's the gold morph, there's the silver morph, there's the yellow and orangey morph. Um, yeah. Uh, Fishery Discord. It is about time to do a Discord. I think it's been long enough with people asking that I think we will set one of those up. I probably won't be actively moderating it just because, like I said, I do not have the time. If people want, if people want more than one video a week for me at this point, I don't have the time to spend, you know, four to six hours a day interacting with people and then and other creators and, you know, and researchers that I'm asking questions of to try to find out questions for other people. Um, and, uh, yeah, a discord, I mean the, the YouTube page, uh, or not YouTube, the Facebook page is, is pretty popular as far as like people are able to help each other there pretty easily. But I think a lot of y'all are, um, heading towards that and the discord thing because of other channels already kind of bringing you there 
I didn't want to be the channel to make you get into Discord. <laughs> so, because I find it a little bit demanding and, uh, oh, thank you, Nirvana Aquatics. I think, you know, a few people has, uh, Jose Torres, Discord is, it's like YouTube and Facebook combined, kind of. Um, it lets you kind of have an old school forum set up but you can also post and stream media through it. Um, it's kind of an all-in-one platform. Honestly, like if if all the other platforms didn't exist, it would be the all-in-one, like does the job of all the platforms. Um, and then you can form like little breakaway groups and stuff like that. So I think we will do that, but it might be hosted under someone else's like main server or something. Uh, I know Father Fish has tried to set me up one several times. I don't want to be on his just because um, uh, our politics sometimes clash. And I don't want our subscribers going at it over that ever. Like, that's a silly thing to get into. A, that's a it's, it's a thing I don't I would, I'd rather avoid. Um, but, you know, um, I know that. Um, Rob's aquarium guys, he is also, he's got uh, the aquarium guys podcast. Um, he's got a bunch of different spaces and slots for different things. So basically, you know what I'll need to do is I, I'll, I'll need to put um, a group of people together that want to help with discord. Mm -hmm. If you guys could do me a favor and after this live stream is, is, uh, if you after you're able to comment on it, if you would like to help with Discord, even if it's just setting me up the bots, like Nirvana Aquatics said, um, that would be great because I don't even know like the first thing about how I'm supposed to do it, or if there's a big benefit to having my own, or um, or if I need a server versus I share a server and if there's a cost to that. I'm such a dummy with this that I I, I, I need help from you guys. So if you want to help me, <laughs> uh, let me know. Oh, nice. You got a white dragon female call from Greg Sage. Nice. Uh, that's awesome, Moose. Uh, I need to do it. See, I need – that's the other thing is uh, – People like Moose and I will have like a big long conversation going back and forth about something that's a big cool project um, that I really want to keep track of. And then I'll have 15 emails come in that are just, look at this picture of my fish. What's wrong with it? And it's like a terrible picture. Anyways, not most of you. Most of you guys are great. And so I don't want to talk crap and like then discourage you guys from feeling like you can communicate with me because that that's not the goal at all either. But some days I'm just like, man, people use some common sense. Uh, Von Hoff. Hello. Um, your mother fish on discord. Okay. African orchid dude. Right on. Uh, Von Hoff. I love all the fish channels. No politics. I assume 50% don't have the same views, but it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, for the most part, you know, around elections, like a lot of people are new to the the the, ven the venue of fish things, but there have been a few things that have gotten kind of political because they had to in like the bills that were trying to ban all pets, including all fish with a blacklist and then a whitelist done in reverse so literally like they'd start with a hundred creatures you could have and then they'd have to legalize and assess and research every species one at a time after that to make it allowed um that was one that where politics got into the hobby uh and kind of got a bit crazy and people like coming up with like pizzagate crazy conspiracies uh, where we're like, yeah, or just like, let's focus on this one, you know, Senate bill. They got rid of the bill, don't worry, for now. I mean, it's gone from any draft at the moment. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Clark's mini fish room. I like the idea of a mini fish room. Clearly. See my mini fish room, everybody? Uh, there's no cost to it. You only need one person to own it, i.e. add different channels. It monitors itself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sinan, Jewel, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, Discordia, exactly. Um, yeah. To me, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and just say that I don't like any politicians that make it to the national level, pretty much. Very, 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 very few ever in my life have I been like, oh, that's somebody that I believe in. Um, so... Why aren't those fish moving? Oh, well, these fish are so well trained. I mean, where's my finger? Man, this library makes my arm disappear and stuff. Okay, these fish are so well trained that they actually just hover in place. Uh, yeah, or I mean, they're sleeping. That's what I meant. Yeah. Did I say go out on a Lamia? Yeah, I no, but I should have. Um, so then the other thing the other uh what should we you guys we need like another um ooh it's very interesting that you ask that al uh what are my thoughts on megalodon or crazy unknown sea creatures that haven't been captured on film well i don't think megalodon's alive um the size, the diet, the speed, the range, they clearly evolved for uh, not to be benthic. They're definitely pelagic and above. Uh, they're, they're in the, at least in the subliminal, like low light zone, if not in the very top 300 feet of water, just because of the way everything we know about the way their body's built. They're not like a deep, deep, abysmal abyssal abysmal abyssal creature um and i think we would have had some wash up uh also i think we'd know that there's like a great white cut in half or a orca that's bit clear in half or gray whales or whatever but i do think uh yeah, I agree, Discordia. Uh, but I do think that there are probably lots of crazy, maybe even like, you know, giant squids and stuff, squishy stuff uh, that can live down deep. I mean, clearly there's giant squids. Um, Guys, do I tell the sweet old lady I got the plecos from that they're not really 144s? Uh, I would, in a kind way, I would, I, I, you know, if you don't care about your money, because it's not that big of a money, um, you know, it. I would just say, hey, look, I'm not coming at you. I'm not attacking you. I just wanted you to know that this is these have red eyes and that is a sign of albinism l144 is actually a well let's be fair so the history of the l1 the um l144s have three different types there's the l144 original <laughs> or classic and that was a lemon pleco that came out of the wild and it was an ancestrous cirrhosis looking creature so it looked like the species cirrhosis which is you know where your your uh green dragons your uh calico your super reds your short fin you know it was one of those um it looked like one of those uh or maybe a starlight you know um but it was this color yellow, 
like orangey yellow. And um, they found it in 78, I want to say. And they had a, a load of them come in. Some people kept them. Some people, people bred them. And then, boom, they were gone. And they've just disappeared from the hobby, too. Well, then in the 90s, when people were playing with the uh, people like Greg Sage, actually, of Select Aquatics uh, down in uh, Colorado, they uh, they came up with the L144A, which is saying that this is the L144 as close as we know, and we think it was actually wild leucistic, uh, you know, the same as a green dragon or a calico, those cirrhosis or the bristle nose plecos, um, which is a group, but it's also a specific um, species, you know. Uh, and then the B, if you see a 144B, those are pretty unusual. But that is indicating that it is a wild leucistic from somewhere. Uh, and that they know it's a bristlenose, probably a cirrhosis, and that it had a problem with its melanin, but it still has its, uh, its uh, uh, anth anthocyanine uh, and the Athazanthin, Athazaskin, I can never say the word right. Athazaskin, uh, the stuff that makes yellow, red, and orange pigmentation, like in a corn snake that's albino, that's what's going on. And that, that's why they have the beautiful, stunning, bluish, silvery gray eyes. Um, so that's what, um, that's what uh, I would. That, that's the rundown of what's going on there. Uh, is there a good resource for identifying different types of aquarium plants like moss or crypts? No. And moss and crypts are tough. A lot of the, I mean, they're here. Hold on one sec. Let me show you the book you need. The hands down Bible of aquatic plants. Okay, so the Bible of Aquatic Plants right here is the 2019, hold on, we're turning off this library thing because uh, it, as cute as my idea was, now it's interacting with my reality. All right. Oh, I'm a fraud. So this book, Aquarium Plants, um it's got for crypts it's got all your info on like what they're gonna flower like and what they look like growing out of the water in the water it's got pictures of every stage of different morphs uh the whole book is full of pictures and tables and stories and crystal castleman is the godmother the um my hero she's the most well-versed plant expert i mean look at this book it's like what 800 pages or something uh yeah 650 pages uh of plant id and this is just stuff that's in the hobby not just all aquarium this book usually runs around 150 bucks or 100 bucks Sometimes you can get it for like 50 if, if you know a really score of a deal. Now, Redfish, Bluefish, uh, Dot Shop, he had like five of these books left last time I talked to him. I don't remember what they were going for. I want to say 100. But this book has everything you could ever want to know about it. That's why mine is like beat to hell, which I hate to say, but... I have read this cover to cover about three times 
in three well four years since it came out because i got the, the pre-advance um but that is a crazy crazy good book uh and it's aquarium plants there's older editions too but this one why is this everything hold on let me switch this around too there we go crystal castleman right there aquarium plants you want the 2019 version in english because the other versions are in spanish or or deutsch in german um and this book is just mind-blowingly good um and it's got you know detailed breakdowns of what flowering the parts are of every single i mean like for busa philandras it's got and they're actually pronounced buche or butze uh bucephalus alexander the great's horse that was black is why they're named that um but she's got really good information and i mean some of the plants like in kabamba there's just two pages you know there's two on a page because kabamba is kind of a straightforward not necessarily boring but um so it might be hard to find on straight up amazon but i think uh redfish bluefish dot shop he has some there's a few other people that have them too but i can't recall off the top of my head but when you mention crips they flower so differently than they're underwater so like one might have really beautiful like watermelon looking leaves and and egg shaped and underwater they're needles like thorns of leaves that are completely different color and then their flower can really range it could be yellow it can be purple it could be blue it could be uh flesh tone colors it could be weird looking you know so a lot of crypts and, and aquatic plants they don't really um they don't identify plants by their aquatic state in anything other than this book basically there are very 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 few aquarium books that are any good on plants because they're all identifying the plants as immersed form rather than submerged um other than the peterson guide to north american fish the other little bible that i believe in even though i hate the i have to i still haven't made the video because i didn't want to burn the bridge yet but i don't think he's gonna watch or the family i mean uh but this is a phenomenal book of 800 or 8900 species in this newest edition and I, I have both the, the big one, the coffee table book, and the little one. But the problem is they, you know, if I were to make a book, I would, and this is just like Mr. Oh, because it's so easy. Like the crib picture, they have a male and a female in one of the pictures. And then they have three other cribs from different collection points where they don't differentiate or, or whatnot. Um, and then for instance, they've got like four beta splendens, uh, for some reason. Well, I would do like one male, one female, and then one of like the fry at a month or two months old, but the Axelrod mini Atlas of freshwater aquarium fish revised third or fourth edition either one of those are also super super uh quality for at least knowing the fish then it doesn't always have the best info sometimes the info is wrong in fact they're notorious uh so is innis uh they are will they are notorious for having the like 
water parameters that they're from. Sometimes that kind of stuff could be a little wrong. If it's a common fish, don't worry about it. But but they they have had stuff wrong on like niche like killifish and stuff like that that didn't go corrected for like all eight editions of William T. Innes's book, for instance. Uh, pretty crazy. I wish it wasn't so hard to find you guys channel after the chat. Um, what? They are my pea puffer, six blue neon rasboras, a pair of sparkling garamis and cherry shrimp and a heavily planted 10 gallon. Oh, you've got some shorts of that? Wait, pea puffers, six blue neon rasboras, so the axle rod eyes, I like them. Uh, a pair of sparkling garamis, okay. Sometimes they can be a bit nippy with the shrimp, but they're pretty cool. Um, they'll eat baby shrimp a lot, but really like them, yeah. Oh, good night, Clark. If it's 315, where are you? Australia then? No, UK? Europe. Europe. Get some rest, my friend. Get some rest. <laughs> Alex Murdoch eats ass. All right. Well, $1.99? Thank you. Oh, I don't speak Cyrillic. I don't know what you're saying. I'm guessing it's another version of what was going on in the well, it doesn't let me highlight it either so i can't even translate it all right well if anybody speaks ukrainian or russian or whatever that is actually i don't know what that is that's not russian or ukrainian is it i don't know what language that is but thank you for the super chat wow i don't know what language that is i feel dumb I usually can tell you what that is right off the bat. Um, right, guys, outdoors. Hello. Uh, is electric TDS meter a good way to measure hardness? What's the relation to GH? Okay, so yes, it gives you an idea. The problem is there is really, I like TDS meters. Some people say that they're stupid. They're great if you already have low TDS. If you have high TDS, you have no idea what that TDS is. However, if you're like me and my tap water's 30 TDS out of the tap, I know that like 10 or 15 parts per million are the chlorine. And then what else is in there? Maybe like some zinc, some boron, some fluoride, and that's it. Um, and I can easily tell then... In a tank, I put in crushed coral, and boom, it goes up to 300 TDS. And I know, okay, that's calcium and carbon, or calcium carbonate of some sort. Um, and, you know, I, I can figure that it's either that or magnesium or calcium or, or carbon in some form. And so that works for me. But the electrical condu conductivity meters do give you a different insight into what salts and things are in there if you really know what you're doing. But if you don't know all that anyways, I would say get a TDS meter because a TDS meter just allows you, all it tells you is, is there stuff in the water? And it doesn't tell you what stuff. The only way to really find out what your stuff is, is to do reagent tests or to send it away and get really good. Um, I think now it's only 50 or 100 bucks, but you can actually send away a sample of any water from a tank or from your tap or whatever, and they'll give you the full printout of the elements and, and compounds that are in it, uh, breakdown. And I mean, we're talking like one part per billion or trillion 
gold. You know, it'll be 0 0.000001. And that's through gas chronometry, mass spectrometry, mass spectrometry uh, or gra gas chrom chroma chromatography chromat chromatography gosh that's hard to say um so is 97 tds well good to go out of the tap i use conditioner for possible heavy metals but they tend to dose low uh well water if that's your well water that's pretty good um anything under 200 tds that's actually anything under 150 tds is pretty low um there's people in Florida working with 800 to 1200 TDS and they're still able to do things like breed German rams if they were born in that and they're used to it or they're from breeders nearby. Um, but if you know your pH, your TDS uh, and your KH and GH, that's really what you need to know. Your KH and GH, that will... That will give you a lot. That will tell you a lot more. But yeah, a TDS meter is really um, only ten or fifteen bucks. I used to link them in my description. The 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 ones I liked. Um, uh oh, Craig. I hope your fingers okay, sir. Um, so I mean, why not get one? They're fun to play with too. You can put salt in a glass of water and stir it, and you'll see like. Just how much a few peat, like sprinkles of salt impacts your TDS, for instance. Um, but it, remember, too, that if you throw dirt in your tank and it looks cloudy, you may put your TDS meter in there and find out that the TDS isn't that high. You can have pretty low TDS if it's not an organic um, or dissolvable element. Um, if, if it's like... Uh, you know, particles of stuff that are just debris, they're not dissolving into the water column necessarily. Whereas like sulfur and um, iron oxide, like rust and things like that can actually, you know, go down to the molecular level into the water. Um, uh, yeah, the aquarium co-op test strip shows high GH in the last box. Uh, but the TDS meter says 100 to 200 typically. You know, I would be, um, I would, I would get the T, the GH and KH, get the API reagents. They're way, way, way more accurate than test strips. Test strips are pretty lame uh, for anything other than pH. And maybe... Nit yeah, nit nitrates they're good for too, I guess. But um, even ammonia, it's it's kind of like, meh. it's so subjective. It's either there or not. And that's about all you can tell from some of them. Or like, it's like, it might be a trace to hardly there at all. Or it's a ton or, or none. And those are your like options that the strips tell you. Which is better than nothing, but um, the API test kits are really where it's at. Um, as far as like an approachable, you know, 40 bucks, you get all the kinds or whatever. Um, or with the KH and GH, I think they're like 8 to 15 bucks for each one on its own, which is kind of expensive, but it will last you like years. I mean, you don't need to test that stuff all the time. Like just learn what your tank's kind of sit at and then you'll you'll know um so it's money to spend but i think it's worth it um in the long run uh yeah definitely uh yes tetanus does not live on metal it lives on soil in reality i mean it, it can live on metal it can live in, in iron oxide rust but it, it it lives more specifically in dirt, like uh, anthrax or uh, other bacterias. Yeah, it is a big expense, though. Um, you could boost it if it's easy to get a hold of at the store. <laughs> the KH and GH test kits are in small boxes. <clears throat> Not that I condone that sort of activity.
uh, the big test kits in like a big old box though. Uh, and they don't give you enough test tubes, which always annoys me. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's well worth it too, right? Um, so the, the other thing that I wanted to, um, touch on tonight before signing off, I, um, I wrote a script that's been like three years, four years, four years, wow, in the making and some newly published materials mixed with an older paper that had been actually published in Mandarin and I didn't, I didn't know, like I, I missed it somehow, even though I usually do search like Mandarin and Japanese once in a while when I'm researching a subject to make sure that like, I didn't miss a paper that just hasn't been published in English yet. And, um, I missed it. Uh, one from 2018 that had quite a bit of info in it. And I have now been able to put together an entire history of Caradina shrimp and their real names with genetic testing in the hobby so what is a jap japanese bee shrimp what is a taiwanese bee uh how were they made we've even got it traced back to the guy in japan that first made the crystal red before there was even white when it was just clear and red which is now what it we wouldn't even call that a crystal red now we'd call that like a a, a tight a red tiger or a um uh, what's the other name for him? Sin... I want to say Sinipa. That's not at all what they're called. Um, it'll come to me someday. <laughs> Bill Meyer, hello. Uh, Corey Miller, hello. Uh, Chris Sire, hello. Found a Fluval Fex and the sponge squeezed out pink. Is that a bacterial thing? or from fake kid color plants. Um, it could be uh, pink. Um, the pink is very common in soft water. I have a video that's really old. It's one of my first videos and it's called what your bathtub or toilet bowl, one of those, or sink, one of those three, what the color of the rings on your bathtub or toilet can tell you about your aquarium. And it tells you like white, you know, is usually calcium or calcium carbonate, um, lime scale buildup. Pink is another thing uh, that's bacterial based and it's actually uh, metabolizes nitrous oxide and iodine and something else. Uh, but anyways, it's a soft water bacteria, uh, and it could be that, uh, it's very common in household pipes in soft water. Uh, and so do a number of other things too. There's also some like rust and iron loving ones that can be orange or pink, uh, depending. Um, a lot of times if you leave copper or gold, it, it will have bacteria of that color because depending on how the the metal is seen, like how the matrix of the material is assembled, light refracts differently. That's how they make like, you know, different colors of, of like gold can make many different colors in nature. Um, Uh, Buffet says, I got 100% distracted for 15 minutes looking at L144s. I've always been confused about the long, thin, blue eyes are different number or not. So the, the, lo the, lo the length of the fin has nothing to do with the number. That's a morph. And actually, the color has nothing to do with the number, usually. But with the L144, they thought that it was some sort of like cheddar cheese colored species of fish at first. So they gave it a number. Then later they realized actually maybe this is just a leucistic or uh, false albino uh, pleco. And 
then um, they real they they lost track of that fish. That was the original 144. And then now you'll if they're being accurate, usually you'll see 144A, which is um, is the the right one for now today's time but within that you can see short fin normal fin long fin and you can also get different eye morphs i had some with purple eyes and i loved them and i gave them away well I traded them uh so there are some out there with different color eyes i don't know where the purple eye trait came from in mine it's I, the only time i've ever seen it was the ones i had that were like a metallic purple eye um, rather than that like steel, like gunmetal gray or blue kind of uh, cobalt color um, or cadmium blue, that metallic blue that their eyes are. It's really a beautiful color, especially against the yellow. I still have two L144s. Now, if they don't get enough uh, athosanthin ath 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 or uh, or uh, anthocyanin in their food or carotenoids for that matter or omega-3s or omega-6s, fats that they bond to to metabolize them uh, and store them in their flesh, then they're not going to express that orangier color. They'll be a very pale color. So you do want to make sure that you're giving them food with carotenoids or carotenoids in it. I like to say carotenoids so people know it's spelled like a carrot. Um, Jeff, I'm trying to speak at the beginning uh, in my videos, but for now, I just put effort into editing and music arrangement. Ah, yes. I should probably do that too. I mean, the, the music and editing. Um, also, uh, Ivan Mikolji and I have been talking again quite a bit, and there's a chance that we will be, uh, working on a, so our, our nonprofit, the Green Earth Alliance, uh, or GIA, uh, is, it's poised to possibly take over management of a super fun site off of um, Barbados. And there's an island there that the US bombed and basically trashed and toxified um, with chemical weapons and then diesel and all sorts of other stuff they spilled and left there, ammunition, lead, um, stuff like that. Uh, and now it's kind of grown over, but there's bombs and, you know, rusty rebar and like all this stuff there. And it's a good, it's the fourth biggest island in the country of Barbados. Um, but they need someone to clean it up and it's a $110 million project. Well, we'd be managing a sliver, like a 10% of that or something. But if that were the case, I would be pretty busy. Um working with that organizing that but it would be a crazy injection of funds uh in that that's nonprofit, and instead of paying our board of directors we've decided um you know to defer and to reinvest that so instead of operating costs where there's this big overhead bureaucracy in most nonprofits, we want to put that towards the little guys in the developing nations that really like you know they need two grand to discover 10 fish species on an expedition but they just don't have uh, a wi-fi um hotspot or something you know or a, a cell link uh of any sort so um it's something we'll be looking at but yeah Uh, Jeff can uh, fishery. I prefer your style of video and live presentation. Well, thanks, Jeff. Um, I, you know, I am. Uh, I am trying to decide 
um, where to go with the editing. Uh, I think like the editing of fish, if, if I can get images, that's all the better. But I don't want to get so ADD and and uh, flashy with stuff that it takes away from the fact that we're having a talk. Like we're talking like friends about a subject and it's a story. It's something that I'm trying to fill in. That's why I'm torn on the shrimp video um, that I'm working on tonight, probably throughout the night. I'll probably be working on it. But I'm, I'm very torn in. Do I just tell the story and talk? And a lot of people don't like that. But... A lot of people do like it also. Or is it just a slideshow, basically, of the shrimp as they evolved? And there's a lot of missing chunks to that that we just don't have. Um, and, yeah, Aquatic Moose, 50-50 uh, photos and and me. That's that's probably where I'm going to kind of settle. And that'll probably, whatever, piss off half the people. But I feel like if the image isn't providing something that I can't construe without saying like if it can construe something better than the way i can say it then it's worth having usually uh if it's a graph that's full of a bunch of detail then i feel like sometimes it can be distracting so i want to be talking about the graph um unless i want to put it in there for you diehards that want to freeze the screen and actually look at the data that's really what it, what i'm my thoughts on that are all right, guys, um, I probably need to get out of here um, uh, for my brain's sake uh, without the testosterone or sleep stuff. But uh, Nirvana Aquatics, thank you. Uh, big fan of images. I feel like it helps my eyes from wandering because of ADHD. Yeah, no, and I get that 100%. Uh, and I'm, I, I want to, yes, and... Al Abib, I thank you. I, I agree also uh, that you know um, I like I like my stuff to be a, available to those of you doing water changes too, though, and that's why I've been writing scripts for the last year. Like um, the script for this this next video that I have, if if I did it as a podcast probably be a 30 to 40 minute podcast. Actually, we can check right now how long my the, the script of this new video that I've written is. Uh, and then I also have these scripts, which could essentially be articles for um, magazines or um, whatever. I mean, they'd have to probably be cut down quite a bit. Um, All right, here we go. Okay, so save. And I also want to share the, the scripts, and I could probably put them in a doc file, but then I have to uh, host it on, like, my somewhere um, and, and share the link because they're way too long to share in the community tab. Uh, uh, so Caradina B... And Japanese bee and Taiwan bee shrimp controversy, like it's 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 been sorted now. Um, and I have a history of it that now is done. Um, now let's see here. Yeah, so it's gonna be probably a pretty long video even though in my head i feel like i could tell the story really quickly this is all my notes and i don't always follow the script per se holy geez that was a lot wasn't it guys but that is also my uh at the bottom there i've got my um cited sources um and like the references linked so i feel like i want to make that a little more accessible to to members for sure 
All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much uh, for you guys uh, joining me and putting up with my madness and my rambling. Uh, we will be back one more time before. So probably Friday. Uh, it may turn into a Thursday stream instead because Friday I got to get ready. We're leaving first thing in the morning Saturday for Central Mexico. And I will hopefully be getting some footage of the the goalies and the hill streams uh, of Mexico. Uh, so we will be in uh, Jalisco, uh, Jalisco, Jalisco. I never say it right. Uh, state, and we'll we'll be north. Eh, half hour, hour. I don't know how far. How far north, honey? Hour, hour and a half. What? What is it? Uh, PV. About an hour. So we're about an hour north of Puerto Vallarta out of the like tourist zone and stuff up on the coast in a little town called Sayulita. And we may go to some islands. We may go along the coast. We're going to stay out of the mountains because I don't want to lose my head. Uh, literally. Um, but it should be cool i'll bring i'll at least bring back footage of goodyear uh ameca splendens amica splendens and uh you know the rainbow goodyear and the uh uh tequila and volcano uh, split fins all of those i'll at least be able to show you guys the habitat uh it's a long trip just for habitat but you know my wife just wanted to go to mexico is the real story and uh obviously i want to go with her too uh, but maybe we'll have a bunch of lizards and stuff, but I don't know how the internet will be there. Uh, so. Oh, uh, Discordia creates, yes, rice fish do have eggs that are sticky. They do take a, uh, two to three weeks to hatch, depending on the temperature, the hotter, the quicker. Uh, and they will stick to birds and wildlife that that rubs on grass and things. That's partially how they spread. But they've never really been assessed as a big threat. Um, rice fish have, have, have made inroads a few times when people have intentionally tried to dump like hundreds into a creek or something. But they just don't do so well for some reason. I think it's because they're basically food. They're just food for everything else because they're so small. Um, but they don't seem to worry about them like they do the mountain minnows or other things, you know. It's the same reason why, um, you know, guppies are super invasive in a lot of parts of the world, but they're not at, a, at all invasive in, um, in uh, North America, uh, like above Central America, like in, in Florida and stuff, because the uh the other fish that are there like least killifish and the uh holbrook eye uh holbrook eye and what's the other one um anyways the mosquito fish they're uh, gambusia uh there's the holbrook eye and there's a few others but the the two main ones i can't remember the other one at the time they're they're so much more abundant and they eat the babies and they fill the same niche all right guys i'm gonna get out of here but um yeah have a good one uh take care and uh, thank you so much for the super chats and all you members and all you question askers uh, i didn't mean to complain by anybody who's doing anything reasonable that's for sure um all right, guys, have a good one. Thank you so much for watching the channel. I always encourage people to go back, watch old videos. Like, go to my thing, my, my channel homepage and scroll. Like, just hit the scroll wheel up for five minutes. See what's back there. I think a lot of stuff just never gets seen. And some of it, you know, I work really hard on. Um, and it's kind of really niche and interesting. But, yeah, take care. Uh, all right, guys, I'm out of here. Ira, I hear you. Um, I, I do need it. Uh, I'll take I'll take it easy. 
Y'all take it easy. Take care of your critters. Take care of your fish. And of course, take care of yourself or you can't take care of those you love and those around you. Muppet, so good to see you, but I'm leaving. Uh, bye. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Uh, bye, guys. Peace. Moose. Oh, wait. Before I leave. Uh, you guys like this one? Or this one? This one's too modern. This one, I like, if I don't actually, like, none of the books look any different. That's kind of weird. I guess we'll go with, we're going to go with this one or this one. This one actually has a, an aquarium hutch uh, right here and a nice chair. But the chair is a little modern. I kind of dig the more Victorian with the bonsai tree that I put in. Yeah, I think we'll stick with this one. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll talk to you later. Oh, yeah, and if you want to help, hey, Luke, always good to have you here. Thanks, buddy. Oh, by the way, go to the Fin Dig. Check out Sacramento's Fin Dig. I'll be yelling about it when it gets closer. But uh, basically, it is uh, a big weekend-long event and fish show and their speakers and stuff. And uh, you can steal the speakers out of the car or wait, what am I talking about? Uh, no, there's going to be speakers. There's going to be booths and stuff like that. Um, and uh, Luke is partially in charge of it succeeding. So talk to Luke Wang about it. It's all his fault. Uh, in Sacramento in the sp late spring. All right, guys, take it easy. Much love. Bye.